Okay, so last time we talked about um, the fast Fourier transform and why the fast Fourier transform is so much better and faster than just doing a regular old discrete Fourier transform. And I think I should give you a little bit of a sketch of how the FFT works. Okay, so the, all of the gory details are kind of beyond the scope of, of this lecture, but I want to give you just kind of an intuition, a gut feeling for what the FFT is doing. And in practice, most of us are never going to actually have to code up a fast Fourier transform or really uh, you know, do anything under the hood of the fast Fourier transform because any device you know, worth its salt has FFT built in. Okay, my computer, my TV, my phone, everything you come in contact with, the, the FFT has basically been implemented for you already um, you know, years ago. But I still think we should know kind of the high level sketch of how the fast Fourier transform works, just kind of why it's so much faster. And so I want to, to give you the sketch. And the first thing we want to note is that the DFT may be implemented much more efficiently. So this may be implemented much more efficiently. If, um, so this is more efficient if n, the size of my data, is a power of 2. Um, and so this is, you know, might not be obvious at all at first, but let's say that I have x1, x2, dot, 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 all the way up to x1024. Okay, so this is 1024 equals 2 to the power 10 entries. So let's say that my data, let's say that I have data, um, 10, 1024 entries of data that I'm going to be doing the, the discrete Fourier transform on. That's an exact power of 2, 2 to the 10 is 1024. Then I'm going to be able to do this DFT much more efficiently than if I had 1023 or 1025. Okay, that's what I'm going to kind of sketch in this um, and convince you of. Okay, and remember that we had this Fourier transform matrix. Okay, so we had this Fourier transform <coughs> matrix um, F, and I'm going to call it F1024 just to remember that we're doing this on a, it's a big 1024 by 1024 matrix. So F is a matrix that takes my data x, 1024, all of this data in x, and it gives me Fourier coefficients x hat. And remember, we would say that x hat, this big vector of Fourier coefficients, is F, 1024, this big matrix, times my data x. Okay, so for the discrete Fourier transform, you build this big matrix that size 1024 by 1024. Um, you build it out of all of those frequencies that I showed you. And then if I take that and I multiply it by my signal, by my audio signal or image or whatever this is, I get my frequency components x hat. And what I'm going to show you is that if the size of x is an exact power of 2, I can compute this much more rapidly. And that's what the fast Fourier transform does. Okay, so what we can really rewrite this as is we can say x, um, we can say that x hat is really equal to some matrix times another matrix times x, okay? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break up this big F1024 into two sub-blocks of F512 and f 5, 12 with zeros everywhere else. So right away this is looking better uh, because half of this matrix is zeros. And then here I have identity, identity, minus D, minus D, where D is this fancy matrix. D is a big matrix of diagonals, 0, 1, omega, omega squared, dot, 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 up to omega uh, 5, 12 or maybe 5, 11. Yeah, that makes more sense. Zeros everywhere else. Okay? So I can take 
this is an unverified fact, but I'm just telling you, is that I could take this big F1024 matrix, this big discrete Fourier transform matrix that we wrote down before, and I can rewrite it as two 512 size Fourier transform matrices times this fancy uh, kind of interleaving matrix of identities, and then these diagonal elements from 1 up to omega 511. Okay, omega is the that basic frequency we talked about, omega equals e to the minus i 2 pi divided by n. Okay, so divided by 5, uh, uh, 1024. And the last thing I have to do is I have to split my data x into the even indices, so x2, x4, x6, x8, and all of my odd indices. Okay? Now, you can actually verify this. You can write down the discrete Fourier transform matrix for F8. You can write down the big 8x8 discrete Fourier transform matrix by hand. It'll take you some time, but you can do it. And then you can actually verify that if you do this expression, if you take the even indices of your x, and you take F4 and F4 and identity, identity, minus D, minus D, and you write it all out, you exactly reconstruct this larger uh, discrete Fourier transform on your original data. So you can verify this, and it's kind of a, um, it's a real leap actually, like it's not that obvious that this would be a smart thing to do. But notice that I'm doing a lot less multiplications here, right? This is half the multiplications because these are all zeros, that's great. And even better than that, like a lot of these Ds, you know, identity is mostly zeros, this diagonal matrix is mostly zeros, so doing this interleaving is also cheap. But notice that you can do the exact same thing with F512. I can have a new identity, identity, minus D, minus D. This is a different D. Times F256, F256, 0, 0. And now this is a smaller problem still. And I can break this F256 up into F128, 128. And I can break that up into F6464 and break that up into 32, 32, 16, 16, 8, 8, 4, 4, 2, 2. And eventually, um, I have a system. That's, this is almost like a fractal geometry of, of uh, you know, the substructure of each of these is a diagonal, a block diagonal matrix. And the substructure of this is another F128, F128. And notice that there's a lot of indices we're keeping track of, but at the end of the day, most of our matrix multiplications are with zeros, and we don't have to do them. So we're only multiplying a few numbers. And this is much, much, much cheaper to break our problem up into this, um, these sub-blocks. This is a lot cheaper every time we do this. And so it's much, much cheaper to do this discrete Fourier transform if our data is, the size of our data is a power of two because we can keep subdividing all the way. Now, you might wonder, um, you know, practically, what if my data isn't a, a whole power of two? What if I have exactly 1,000 data measurements and not 1,024? Well, you can always take your data and you can always take your data x and you can pad it with as many zeros as you need to get it to the nearest power of 2. So this will be, you know, 2 to the 10, the nearest power of 2. And it turns out that it's still cheaper to actually make your data vector bigger to the next power of 2, as long as you can use this uh, decomposition trick, this fast Fourier transform trick. And that's what computers do, um, do to this day. Okay, so there's still a lot I'm not showing you. Um, there's, you know, justifying why this works and why this really is a lot faster. I haven't shown you that, but this is the kind of cartoon sketch of what the fast Fourier transform is doing. Um, there's actually a beautiful lecture on this by Gilbert Strang, um, so I'll just make a note of that. So Gilbert Strang has a really nice um, lecture on the fast Fourier transform. This is on the uh, MIT Open Courseware number. I think number 31, so you might want to watch this if you're really curious about you know, all of the details and why this works. Um, the upshot, the thing that you really need to remember, the take home about the fast Fourier transform uh, is not actually how we compute it. It's the fact that FFT is order n log n. This is how much time it takes. And the regular old DFT is order n squared. So fast Fourier transform is much, much better 
because it's much, much faster. We can actually compute this fast Fourier transform on a cell phone or on a computer or on our TVs or on our satellite, and it doesn't eat up all of our battery and take forever. Okay? Uh, in the next example, we'll talk about how we load in audio data and what it looks like when we take the fast Fourier transform of audio data. Okay, thank you. <laughs>